Welcome to A View From The Top, brought to you by the Rush Sports Medicine Team. I'm your host, Christopher Harrelson, and every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. here on Super Top Meridian 103.3 FM, we take a look around the world at MCC Athletics. We're in the middle of our holiday break here with Christmas coming just around the corner. Um, coming out of Christmas, though, before New Year's, the men's soccer team is hosting an open tryout December 28th at 1 o'clock at C.D. Smith Field. The tryout's open to all high school players looking to get ID'd as, a, as an underclassman or looking to make the team for next year. And anybody that's still got some junior college eligibility left, they're welcome to come out. Just come out to C.D. Smith Field, 1 o'clock, December 28th, for an open tryout. And also, after the break, the men's soccer, or both teams, are hosting a youth soccer camp February 8th through the 10th at C.D. Smith Field on the campus of Marina Community College. This will be from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. The cost is $75 per camper, and each camper will get a t-shirt and some instruction from some of our current players as well as all our coaching staff. Um, for anybody getting ready to start the rec league or, or getting ready to go back into their travel team or club team, this will be a great tune-up to get you ready for that season. Um, for more information, you can contact Coach Mike Smith at msmith3 at meridiancc.edu to register through him or, or sign up or just get any more information. Um, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, I'll be joined by MCC Athletic Director Sander Atkinson. You're listening to Super Talk Meridian 103.3 FM. Welcome back to A View From The Top. I'm your host, Christopher Harrelson. Today I'm joined by MCC Athletic Director, Sander Atkinson. Sander, good morning. Good morning. We want to thank our sponsor here, Next Level Nutrition. They've allowed us to come out and, uh, and record the show here live at um, Next Level Nutrition at 2320 Highway 19 North. Um, if you're looking to come out and do Christmas shopping, I'd encourage you to stop by and pick up one of the loaded teas, kind of give you that little bit of boost to get through the holiday shopping the last second Christmas gifts, which I've got to do when we leave here. Uh, Sander, in honor of your love for Kentucky and uh, your recent trip to Mexico, I got you a blue pina colada. So you got the Kentucky blue with a little bit of pina colada to remind you of the of Mexico when you were down there a couple of weeks ago. So I uh, hope Appreciate you enjoy it. your, I think this is your first loaded tea ever, right? It's my first loaded tea. Well, good. I know, uh, I know your kids and your wife love them. So oh. now you can, you can get on the bandwagon. <laughs> To, to join them. I may be hooked. There you go. So I want to get, get you to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, Meridian Community College has, has kind of had a different path in athletics than the other community colleges in the state where we have been independent and then we have been a part of the state association and we've done both a couple of times. And I think for, for people who may not be as in-depth in, in athletics or in community college athletics as you and I are, they may not understand exactly what that sure. means. So kind of give me the history of MCC and, and our travels through in and out of the league. Sure. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it is, like you said, it's, a, it's complicated if you're not um, in the middle of junior, junior college athletics, especially in Mississippi. But, and I, I feel like I've got a little bit of a unique perspective. I mean, I've been here at, at MCC now for 20 – six years in August and um, but my father-in-law uh, spent 40 years working at MCC and, and was a member of the first basketball and baseball teams right uh, then went on to Delta State for a couple of years but then came back immediately and so he's sort of been uh, you know there all along and, and through marrying his daughter and getting to know him I, I, I learned a lot about the history of this of this uh, school's athletics well, we, you know, the, the simplest way to put it is that for many years we competed, when we started athletics in 1970, we competed just like the other schools. We were just another Mississippi Junior College play in athletics. Um, and somewhere in the late 80s, mid to late 80s, um, we had been through a long period of, of frustration of not being terribly competitive. and mostly based on the fact that there's these the districts that support each community college. Most schools have four, five, maybe even six counties that are their district of support. Right. 
Uh, Meridian has one. Lauderdale County is our only district, and we share that county with East Mississippi. Right. So after many years of, of frustration, uh, I think uh, there was a decision made by then President Bill Skaggs for Meridian to leave the state conference and just follow the National Junior College Athletic Association rules. Uh, and that paid off, uh, you know, in, in big way over the coming, over the next 10 to 15 years, uh, we became very good in almost every sport. So just had. quickly, what's the difference when you talk about, sure. you know, leaving the state association and then going by the national rules? Yeah. What makes one that much better or, 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 or the difference in the two? Well, the big difference is that the uh, state association chooses to impose, in some instances, stricter rules than the National uh, Junior College Athletic Association. Okay. So in things like uh, where your players can come from, the, the state association has restrictions on the number of out-of-state players you can have, uh, whereas the national, off, or the national rules don't put any limits on the number of out-of-state players you can have. You can get your players all from anywhere in the world. Uh, there's also some other things about the way scholarships are done. That the, the, the state conference restricts a little bit more money than what the national allows. Um, and those are the fundamental things. There's some other particulars, but those are the big ones that, that make it uh, a little bit tougher to be competitive with the rest of the nation uh, from inside the conference. And even back, you know, like you talked about in, in the 80s and even into the 90s, even more restrictive, as well as the, the out-of-state players and the scholarship, was they wanted to restrict where the actual in-staters came from. The, you talk about sure. those districts, right? That, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that is something that uh, was, a, was a big deal. Uh, back up until the early 2000s, uh, athletes in Mississippi, if you whatever district you grew up in and went to high school in, was that you had to go play at that junior college right. if you chose to go to a Mississippi junior college. Um, and and so that was that was one of the big impetuses I think that caused Meridian to leave is that you know having one county made it really tough to to field teams that were competitive with these schools that right. had multiple counties to draw from. I got you. And so we we stayed out of the league up until somewhere around two uh, early two thousand early two thousand two two thousand three mm -hmm. somewhere right in there. Right. Uh, then at that point the the state. The conference made some ch rule changes that uh, you know that our administration at the time saw as a way to allow us to be competitive. Right. So, so we re rejoined the state association, and and in fact, it uh, we were competitive. Those those rule changes, I think, had the intended effect. They allowed us to be a part of it and field competitive teams. Sure, I think back then that's when we had the the protected list. So. The president still wanted the majority of your team to come out of your district, and they were, and they gave you an opportunity to to protect um, certain players so that they couldn't leave your district while still allowing some others to come, you know, from out of district. And then we, not having a district, kind of got to to cherry pick off That's those right. protected lists, which, like you said, allowed us to be more competitive. And then um and and we won you know several state championships during that time, but then they made another change which kind of forced our hand to leave again, right? That's right. I think that uh, after several years of, of that protected list, uh, there was a decision made by the presidents of the state to, to make an adjustment uh, where we, as Meridian Community College, were going to have to identify X number of players, depending on the sport, around the state that we were interested in recruiting. And those were the only players that we would be able to recruit outside of our district. Right. Um, we looked at that as being too restrictive, and, sure. and so once again, we left the, con the state conference and, and followed the national rules for a few years. Right. I know, and that was, that was about the time that I was, you know, coming on board here and, um, and, and trying to talk to people in the community and, and explain to them, you know, why we're, you know, last year we're, we're competing like this, and then this year we're competing like this, and then also around that time, is when I think the state, you know, half the state for a long time was Division One in like baseball and softball, and the other half was Division Two. So we had a Division uh, One state tournament, and we had Division One and Division Two region tournaments, and oh, yeah. and there for several years it was confusing to anybody to try and explain what rules anybody was following. And so then, once again, um, and I don't know if the presidents did this 
just to create more parity across the state. I feel like that has happened. Or if they did it to try to get us back in. I, I never quite understand where they wanted us during all that time. But they made yet another rule change in which they opened up the state to everybody. That's right. That's right. Yeah, they, uh, the decision finally was made just to do away with the district lines when it came to athletic recruiting. Right. Uh, the district still exists as, as uh, tax support for each community college and even for general student recruiting. But for athletics, you can recruit any student from anywhere in the state. Uh, and that made it, you know, where there was no reason for us not to be in the Right, right. Well, no, I think that, I think the intended purpose of that, whether it had anything to do with us or not, or just, you know, the other community colleges in the state, was to create a level playing field and, uh, and give the students the opportunity. It, it seemed very restrictive on their parts to say, hey, we know you've worked so hard your whole high school career, you know, to go play somewhere, but you have to go 30 minutes down the road. You don't have the option to go anywhere else. And so I think opening up the state really was a benefit to the, all the student athletes in the state to have an opportunity to go wherever they wanted to go. That's right. And um, I talked about this with Coach Smith in the, the very first episode. You know, there's, there's kids that you know, have lived in Lauderdale County all their life. And, and they don't want to stay in Lauderdale County for two years, which we want them here. You know, we recruit them. We want them to be here. But they don't always want to stay here for two more years. They want to go off and, and get a feel for the, for the college experience. Now, oftentimes they go for one year and realize, you know what, Lauderdale County is pretty good. <laughs> so bad. And, uh, and they wind up coming back. But it did give them an opportunity to make that decision, you know, once they've graduated high school, to go wherever they wanted and, um, and compete you know, for whatever school they chose, it, it, it allowed them to have an actual recruiting process where they didn't get that in the past. So now that we're in the state, and with the exception of a few sports, we're Division Two, scholarship-wise. That's right. Tell me what that means, Division Two, scholarship-wise, sure. versus, you know, Division One, and, and exactly how we compete. Sure. Well, in, in, in junior college athletics, the, the divisions are – it's a little different than what I think people think of when they think of NCAA, athletics, Division One, Division Two, and so on. In junior college, it's all about the, – the divisions are all determined by how much athletic scholarship you give. For a Division One sport, you can give a full athletic scholarship. Um, for a Division Two sport, you can only pay for tuition and course-related fees. And we have one Division One sport – well – Again, when we talk about how, uh, how hard it is to keep things straight, we have one true Division I sport in men's, men's and women's basketball. Uh, tennis is also Division I, but that's only because at the national level there's not a Division II. We scholarship it as if it's Division II with tuition and fees. So that's the, that's the big difference is that our sports are to, most of our sports are tuition and fees is what we're allowed to play. And that's, that's statewide. That's, that's what the conference rules right. uh, do with all sports. And then the conference also, I guess, limits how many actual scholarships we get? Certainly. Okay. Um, and most of those are – it's very similar to the national rule. National, like uh, baseball, for instance, is allowed 24 tuition and fees scholarships, and the conference allows that. Okay, okay, so good. All right, so now that we've, we've talked about it, now we've got a little better understanding of exactly how we compete. So you've been here, like I said, 26 years, yeah. and, and unless I'm mistaken, you're the longest by far in the department. <laughs> I got to thinking about it. I think I'm second in there coming Probably in there. So. But, um, and you've seen a lot of changes. You know, we talk about the in and out. Um, we've, uh, in just a couple of years, you brokered a deal with, uh, with BSN, so now we're an Under Armour sponsor sure. school. And uh, so tell me just, I don't know, some of the changes and things you've seen through our department as well as through maybe through the state with the exception of the in and out of the league like we talked about. Yeah, yeah well, you know, it has been 26, almost 26 years, which is uh, not – at all what I expected 26 years ago. Right, I, right. I, I didn't think I'd be here this long, but fell in love with this school and, and, and a local Collinsville girl, and, and that uh, changed my life forever, and I uh, love it. You know, the big, I guess the, really the biggest change that, that has happened in my time here is that what we talked about a few minutes ago when the state decided to open up recruiting because that changed the landscape uh, tremendously and um, where in the past uh, – there didn't have to be as much emphasis on facilities and recruitment because you kind of knew where your kids were coming from. Right. Uh, now, all of a sudden, it was important that coaches get out and travel the state to recruit. It was important that you really look at your facilities and try to figure out what's going to be attractive to student athletes right. as they're making college decisions. And it's, um, you know, it's something we have 
strive to do and, and work on constantly is looking for ways to upgrade things because recruiting is the name of, of, of college athletics. Right. Uh, the, the, the most important uh, factor in being successful is making sure you get good student athletes in to, for your programs. And it's, a, and it's such a tough business to determine what it is that's going to, for a student athlete to make a decision. You know, is it a connection with a coach? Is it facilities? Is it the gear that you're able to supply them with? It's a, it's a fickle business, and you, all you can do is do the best you can to, to make things uh, as top-notch as you can. Sure. So over the past couple of years, you know, we've made several upgrades to facilities. Um, it, it's funny, when I think about some of the upgrades that we've made, it feels like we made them you know, two or three years ago, but then I got to thinking about, you know, the new baseball clubhouse and, and, um, and dugout and things like that. That's been there 10, 12 oh, yeah. years. Yeah, yeah it's and been over 10 years. It's, it's hard to believe because I can remember literally, it seems like just a couple of years ago when we were doing that project and then it got somebody, I think Coach Shuddeth reminded me, you know, it's been here, you know, 10, 11 right. years. It's amazing to think. So we added the new state-of-the-art clubhouse. It's huge. It's got to be the biggest clubhouse. Um, in the state by far with, um, you know, with 35 lockers and a pool table and a ping pong table and, and then um, the president's perch up top overlooking the field that, you know, that nobody else has got in the state. And so, um, but since then, and here most recently, we've added um, a new padded wall. Yes. We've added new padded rails in the dugouts. And probably our biggest upgrade that we needed more than anything, which you were, were instrumental in getting this, was new lights. And so, <laughs> I know you've you've interviewed about these lights over a you know yeah. half a dozen times, yeah. but just quickly tell me about the about you know oh, how we got those lights. You know those lights were uh, were a, a tremendous upgrade to to our facility. The the we had the original lights that were closing in on thirty years old, and and, and it was tough to see. Matter of fact, I, I, you know as, as a side note, we we inducted Tyler Moore, former Eagle great and Mississippi State Bulldog. Uh, and Major League Baseball player last spring into the uh, Mississippi Junior College Hall of Fame. And, and he was our all-time home run leader when he left MCC. And I joked with him because we had just completed the lights at that time. I said, you know, how many more home runs would you have hit? If you could see. If you could have seen the, the baseball right. when you were playing here. And he laughed and said, yeah, I probably could have added a few to that to my record. But, uh, but those lights are really tremendous. They're, they're state-of-the-art LED lights that um, obviously we added the feature where we can change colors and they can dance to the music, which is a, a neat thing to see. If, you, if people haven't seen that, I would encourage you to come out to a night game at MCC and, uh, and see the light show if, uh, if we win or hit a home run. Yeah. Now, they've, they've definitely added to, to the experience both soccer and baseball um, because we, we got the lights on both baseball and soccer. But... But the kids like it, and you and I talked when we first got them in, and and we were just kind of testing them out, and we would, you know, we would do a light show after the game or or, or something like that, just kind of getting a feel for it. And as soon as the lights go off, everybody's phone goes up, and they're <laughs> recording it, and um, and so I, it's been a, a huge addition. We um, we played some state game soccer out here this summer, and we had a night game, and I was sitting with some parents of of some up and coming players, and. Um, and somebody scored a goal and we played the light show for them and they were just amazed. They were like, this is so cool. I yeah. love coming out yeah. here, you know, and watching this. So, it, you know, you talk about recruiting, that's just one of those things that adds to the atmosphere of a game and, and the players really like it, the coaches like it, the fans love it. Um, it's something that, that sets us apart. So it's good to have, you know, to be able to, to do that for the players, you know, anytime we, like I said, win, hit a home run, score a goal, anything like that. So um, I think that's been a big addition Speaking of additions, we talked with Dr. Huebner about this a couple of, of weeks ago, but just want to get your take. So for years or, or forever, I guess, um, tennis has had to play off campus. They That's play right. their home matches at Northeast Park, which is a great facility. You know, we've hosted many tournaments out there. Um, and then softball has played for the last, I don't know, 12 years maybe. At least, yeah. Um, out at, at Highland Park at Tommy McDonald Field. And so they're both looking to get a big upgrade here in the next year or two. Sure. So tell me a little bit about that project. Well, we're really excited about that project. Um, you know, we're right across from our main campus at the, at the site of the old Myrtle Estes, now uh, Eagle Hall dormitory at the, at the old Matty Hersey Hospital site. We are um, in the planning stages of a new softball field and, and tennis complex. And uh, it's going to be a tremendous addition to those programs. They, they desperately need it. And, um, and we're looking forward. We've started Citizens National Bank has, has jumped in and kick-started the, the 
a fundraising campaign and they are the lead um, sponsor for the thing but we're you know we're hoping to break ground this spring i think that's the plan right um and you know construction will take a while especially with all that's going on in the world but uh but we're looking forward to getting that started and both those programs will will benefit tremendously absolutely i know i've talked with coach carter and coach robinson and they're both excited every time i talk to them hey have you heard anything when are we breaking ground i think it's coming you know i think we've got a tentative date set so hopefully we can we can get that project started i know both those programs are going to benefit um because i think about the success that you know coach mcphail had over the years with tennis and and almost being a little hamstrung by the fact that we had to go across campus or across town to play those matches and and you think and and tj's come in and he's done a great job with with kind of keeping that program going and I think, man, how much better are we going to be? Oh yeah. When um, when nobody can you know can say, oh well, you can go to Meridian, but you got to go all the way across you right. know to play. You've got your home courts. Some other you know schools in the state have have made have got home courts on their campus now. So we'll be right there with state of the art. We're going to have live streaming you know from both from tennis and softball that we haven't had in the past because of their their all site venues. So I think that's going to be huge for both those programs. And um, I know they're looking forward to to getting that going and, and so am I. I'm looking forward to having it there too. So well, we're out for Christmas. I know you're yeah. uh traveling around watching a little high school basketball. What else you got planned for the break? Not a whole lot now. I mean I I, I was able to go, you know, my folks, I'm from Kentucky originally and as you said at the beginning and, and was able to go up last week and spend a few days with, with, with my folks with a couple of my children. And uh, now that we're back here, um, I'm excited just to have some downtime. That's right. And spend it with family and, and enjoy these holidays. That's right. Well, you got all your Christmas shopping done? Or are you going out? You got uh, you some last-minute stuff to do I like tell you I what, do? For the first time in my life, because I was scared of shipping, I, uh, I got everything done early. And so I am actually done when I usually wait until about the 24th to finish up. Right. But I'm done. I know. I am, uh, I'm checking the mailbox pretty regular because we've ordered some stuff weeks ago. <laughs> And uh, I'm like, okay, it was supposed to be here yesterday. It's supposed to be here today. And so um, I certainly hope that, that the, the FedEx and the UPS, I know those folks are working more than overtime this That's time right. of the year trying to get things out, and they're doing a great job. And, uh, so hopefully all of, all of our packages will come in. Like I said, I've just got to leave here today and go wrap up a few things. Um, but other than that, we're pretty much done. Well, Sandra, I'd like to thank you um, for joining me today. I know this is um, – a pit stop on your Christmas break as you head to a to a basketball game. You, um, but again, thank you. Um, let's take a quick break. You're listening to a view from the top, brought to you by the Rush Sports Medicine Team here on Super Top Meridian 103.3 FM. Meridian Community College. For more than 75 years, we've helped students soar. Establishing the first tuition guarantee program in Mississippi, we put our students first while creating pathways into the workforce and offering a seamless transition to a four-year degree. Now is the time to find your purpose and register today because those who move forward never get left behind. MCC, find your wings. Welcome back to View from the Top, brought to you by the Rush Sports Medicine Team here on Super Top Meridian, 103.3 FM. Um, Once again, I'd like to thank... MCC Athletic Director Sander Atkinson for joining us today and um, I'd like to thank the Next Level Nutrition Girls for allowing us to come out during this holiday time and and set up and film in their shop. As you can see behind me there's hundreds of different flavors um, here at Next Level and if you don't see something on the board you like you can just tell them and they'll they'll create it for you. So um, during this holiday time when you're out shopping I encourage you to come by 2320 Highway 19 North and Next Level Nutrition and see Courtney and the girls and, and pick up a loaded tea or a, or a meal replacement shake or, or even if you're going to work out. You can get pre-workout, post-workout, anything you want. Be sure and come on by and check it out. As we come out of this Christmas break, the, the men's and women's basketball team will get back started with MAC play. The, uh, the men will host the Northeast Mississippi Community College Tigers in the Graham Gymnasium Thursday, January the 6th. Um, we'd love to have you come out and, and see the team. The team's 8-2 and two this year. They're off to a great start. Um, if you can't make it out, you can always watch those games on mccegles.live. And as you're sitting around for the holiday break and you just want to maybe catch up and see how the teams have done over this first semester, you can go to mccegles.live and watch archives. You can watch our games from earlier in the season um, or even last year. You can go back as far as you, as you want and watch games. I'd encourage you to do that. We, uh, we've got a state-of-the-art media team that, that really does a great job with producing those 
um, live streams and uh, we're, we're hands down the best in the state at doing that. So I'd encourage you to go watch some of those games and, and watch our games coming up in the, in the, in the spring. Um, that same Thursday, January the 6th, the Lady Eagles will travel to Northeast Mississippi Community College as we're playing a mirrored schedule once again this season where um, when one team plays at home, the other team plays on the road versus that same opponent. And we'll do that throughout this spring semester as we finish up MAC play. Um, and so Lady Eagles are off to a, a good start, not quite as good as the men. They're four and five um, this season, but they're one and one in conference play. So they're right there in the thick of things as, as we try to compete to, to make the playoffs again this year. And then it won't be long um, into the spring semester that baseball and softball will kick off. And, um, and they're both ex expecting great teams this year. Coach Dylan Suddeth is, he's returning nine starters from, um, from last year's team that, that made a, a deep run in the playoffs and in the region tournament. And um, Coach Robinson on the softball side, she's expecting a lot of good things. She's got some good freshmen coming in. So, so both those teams will be kicking off um, mid-February. And then not long after that, MCC Tennis and MCC Golf will both get started. Um, MCC Golf currently seventh in the country. Um, they've won two of the first three MAC events this fall. So they're looking to pick up and compete for a state championship. And uh, Coach Keith thinks maybe even a national championship. He's got a really solid team um, and they're playing well this year. So um, a lot of things going on in the spring and uh, we'll bring it all to you here on A View From The Top as we keep you updated on what's going at Marina Community College Athletics. Um, don't forget, MCC Men's Soccer having an open trial in just a couple of days, December 28th, um, 1 o'clock at C.D. Smith Field. We encourage all high school players that you're looking to get ID'd or, or want to make the squad for next year, come on out and, um, and try out for Coach Sam Wilson's MCC soccer team. MCC Soccer is also hosting a youth soccer camp this spring, February 8th through 10th at C.D. Smith Field. Um, that'll be from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. And again, get, it's a good tune-up for, for kids getting ready to go back into rec season or club season. Um, they'll get coached by our current players and coaches. So they'll get some great instruction there and get ready for the season. Again, for more information, contact Head Coach Mike Smith at msmith3 at meridiancc.edu. And to keep up with all things MCC Athletics, be sure to like us on Facebook at MCC Eagles Athletics. Follow us on Twitter at MCC Eagles Sports. And for every episode of A View from the Top, Eagle Highlights, and much more, subscribe to us on YouTube. Just search Meridian Community College. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of A View from the Top, brought to you by the Rush Sports Medicine team. Join me every Wednesday morning here at 9 a.m. on Super Top Meridian 103.3 FM as we take A View from the Top.